So I have something different I want to share with you today. This is the flux wrap. If you're interested in finding out what the flux wrap is, keep watching. So this video is going to be different than just about every other video I've done around an item like this. And I say like this because, well, I'll explain in a minute. So normally when I receive a new product, either something I buy myself or something that's been sent to me for testing and review, then I will do at least half a dozen uses of it, half a dozen burns, to get an idea about how the stove works. Then I do a preview video. I don't jump right to review. Uh, I do a preview video just to give an idea what it is I'm looking at. And then I do, a, I wouldn't call it extensive, but I'll spend a couple of months at least going over the item and trying out different things with it. I'm looking for durability, I'm looking for versatility, I'm looking for, well, all the things that I like to put into my videos. So when the owner of the company that produces the flux wrap contacted me and said he'd like to send me some samples, I agreed because I saw some value in this, but I didn't know what to call it. And I still don't know what to call it. It's referred to as the flux wrap stove, but I, I hesitate on calling it a stove. In fact, I'm going to ask you what you think it is or what you, you should call it in a minute. Right now, and this is subject to chain, I'm referring to this as a collection of components that you can use for burning wood and cooking or boiling water with. Does that sound like a stove? I guess it might, but I think you'll understand more in a minute. So what is the flux wrap? Well, the flux wrap at its most basic, at its core, is a piece of metal, and this is a high temperature stainless steel that is very thin, very flexible, and as you can see on close inspection, it's been embossed with a waffle weave. So I'll give you some dimensions in a minute on it, but why the waffle weave? Well, the waffle weave was done for two reasons. My understanding is one, to give it strength. So structurally, it's a lot more solid with that waffle weave than if it was just a flat surface. And the other, and the other reason is airflow, because it will at least assist with the airflow up the inside of the chamber. So this is the primary component. In fact, I received two of them. This one, as you can see, has not been marred by the use of fire. And I'll explain why I haven't used that for uh, fire yet. I, I mostly, well, the biggest reason, I guess, is I wanted to do extended fire burning in this one to see if it would take any damage on. It hasn't so far. But let me just give you very quickly some statistics and show you the other components that came with this. And then I'll show you how it's used. All right, so two of these. Just the two of these things together, and I'll show you how you, you might carry them in a second. They come in at 5.4 or 5.4 ounces. Really light, you know, that's really light for what it is, if it's something you want to carry. And the, each of these sheets are 16 inches by 8 inches. So, get that one out that I started with. So, 8 inches tall, and I say tall because that's the way it's used, by 16 inches long. So, they're both identical that way. Um, here's what, what I'm doing with it and how I'm carrying it. I have a water bottle with me, which I'm going to use in the demonstration in a few moments' time. But I, I carry the two of these wrapped around the outside of the water bottle in just a little stuff sack that I made. And I have a strap that kind of holds it all together. And basically that's the concept, is that you can take this with you wrapped around a water bottle. It takes up very little additional space, adds only 5.4 ounces to the package. Now there are a few components which add to the weight, but very, very light, and I'll show you those in a second. And you have something that you can use as a stove, or a windscreen, or I guess a few other things. And that's part of what I'm gonna be asking you to tell me in the comment section at the end of the video, is what would you do with this? How would you describe this? How would you define this? And what would you use the pieces for? I'll tell you and show you to at least a, one or two demonstrations of what the, the engineer who put these together does for it or, or uses them for. But let me show you the other components. Now, the components that are, go with this have changed over time. I have some of each here. And the concept was that for this to be very simple, very uh, easy to reproduce if necessary. So. These components are something that are readily available to anybody. You don't have to buy these from the company. To begin with, oops, stainless steel clips, alligator clips, I guess uh, you may call them. Uh, there's probably another, it's almost like a little close, stainless steel clothes peg. And you use these as feet. I'll demonstrate in a moment. You use these as feet to hold the stove off of the ground. So those are one part of the component. 
Originally, reach in here and find these. Everything was done with cotter pins. So, oh, that's not it. Where are my cotter pins? Here they are. So when these were first sent out to me, the engineer, Peter Rossi, sent a number of these cotter pins. And basically they're a two inch stainless steel cotter pin that has been built, bent into an L shape with one leg and bent back over itself with the other leg. I'll demonstrate how those were intended to be used. Now he's updated to these clips as the feet for the stove. These still have a use, as you'll see in a few moments time as well. So basically you assemble the stove in a tubular fashion around a bundle of wood. And again, I'll assemble it or I'll demonstrate it. And then for a pot rest on top, more cotter pins. So these are cotter pins that have been put together in a triangular formation, bent over for one inch, and then the link from a ball chain, uh, stainless steel links from a ball chain put on it. Those are limiters to keep it from going down too far on the stove assembly. So rather than trying to describe with words, why don't I show you how this is supposed to be used. All right, I've moved down to the ground for the rest of this demonstration. So the concept is, is that these are wrapped around your water bottle and I do use a strap to keep them in place and then I put them all inside of a little stuff sack and uh, it just rides in my backpack. If I can choose to use it or not to use it, I have my water bottle regardless. And then when you're ready to use it, you just run around looking for sticks. Sticks all in, well, they, they should be shorter than the eight inch height here. Uh, so yeah, they're, I just broke off a bunch of, these are dead prime, dead, pine branches. That's the concept. Something that you can just pick up off of the forest floor uh, as dry as you can get them, but they don't have to be perfectly dry. And then we're going to, now we're, all we're going to do is wrap them up inside of this. So start placing my sticks in. I note now that a few of them are more than eight inches, but I tried. I tried. If you can vary the sizes, some big ones, some small ones, it helps to fill the gaps so there's not too much open gaps in the bundle here. You can make the bundle as big or as small as you want it to be. As long as you can wrap it up like I'm doing now. I think that one's going to have to come out. As long as you can wrap it up like I'm doing now, then you've got basically a wrap that you can use for a stove. Now, I'm, I think I can get a few more in this. Let's just try and see if I can't get a couple more in here. So I can give you a good demonstration. So. The concept of the stove is it is a hybrid between a rocket stove and a top lit updraft or T-LUD stove. And you probably hear that term used most often with wood gas stoves. So Peter claims that this will work like a wood gas stove and it does. I've, I've, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, I've got one stick a little bit too long. Actually, I think I will take that one out. It's worth taking a few moments to get this as even in length as possible. All right, so I've got my bundle. Now I'll take my clips and just clip them on, clip them close. I'm putting four clips on. Doesn't really matter which way they go, I guess. And there we go. Okay, so now we've got four clips and this is how it's going to work. It's going to stand up like this. The clips provide feet for stability and maintain some airflow underneath. Now, right away, you should, it should be obvious to you that you're going to have to put this on a fire safe surface. I have a fire pit, which I'm going to be using it in. If I didn't have a fire pit, I guess I could be using a, I don't know, a fry pan, piece of aluminum foil, something else to keep the stone, you know, a good stone, uh, muddy earth or mineral earth would work. As long as it's stable and flat, as you'll see, uh, that's one of my concerns is stability here. Okay, so how does the top piece work? So now this top piece can be, well, that's pretty close already. You can move the pins in and out. So you narrow that, that uh, triangle down or widen it up depending on how wide a, a, a bundle that you created for yourself. And then when you think you've got the right width, put it on top and make sure you have it Locked in place. All right, that's it. That's the whole stove assembled. I'm going to put this in the fire pit and we're going to get a little fire going in it and we'll put the uh, water bottle on and see if we can get it bring to a boil and I'll show you how the stove operates when the wood is uh, engaged. Okay, hopefully the lighting has worked here. I know that, the, well, it's late afternoon and the shadows are starting to cast long, but hopefully there's enough light. You can see what's taking place in the fire pit here. So I've set the cylinder up in the fireplace. 
Uh, appears to be stable at this time. The, you know, the it's sinking in on some edges, but we'll see how this goes. I have the bundle of wood in, and I just have, well, I guess you can use anything you want to get this going, the fire lighter of your choice, and of course mine is birch bark. And I have a couple pieces of fat wood laying in there as well. So since it's a top-down burn, we'll see if we can't get it going. My birch bark quality is not great. Not all birch bark is created equal. Once it does start going, though, it does go. And it will take a second to catch on, obviously. We'll just leave this run for a second. Uh, this is a top-lit updraft stove with rocket stove characteristics, obviously, because the height is twice the width. And actually, it's about three times the width, which is closer to rock stove proportions. Three times the width, meaning the diameter that I have it set at right now, which is about four inches. So, uh, you light it like this. It's a one-shot deal, meaning you light it and you run through the fuel. You don't add additional fuel to it while it is running. Now, the other thing I want to say about it at this point is, it is, for the most part, a one-trick pony, meaning it's intended for use with one fuel, sticks found on the ground or broken off of branches. It's not meant for use with charcoal. I think it might work with charcoal, but it's not meant for use with charcoal, alcohol, wood pellets, or anything else. It is meant for use with sticks. And it's doing this well, and there is truth to the, to the claims that it is both a rocket stove and a top lift updraft stove with wood gasification that takes place. But we're gonna see that as this progresses. Now, I'm gonna let this go so that the fire sinks into the body of the wood and then we'll get the water bottle on. That's as close as I wanna to get to the stove with the camera right now. But if you can see down inside, it's a really, it is a very clean burn. The flames are shooting right now. Well, the wind is distorting them, but the flames are shooting good 10, 12 inches above the top of the flux wrap. And if I can show you down inside, it certainly does appear to be gasification, so that at the level of the wood, well, gasification is occurs when pyrolysis occurs. I'm actually seeing flames further down into the body of the wood, so I don't know if I'd call that true pyrolysis, but it's uh, pretty close anyway. So you are getting elements of both a top-lit updraft uh, wood gas stove as well as a chimney stove happening here. And now let's put the water bottle on. I do have to reposition the camera so that you can see how this works. I just want to point out right now, Peter did send me a couple of item, other items along with these flux wrap and clips, but uh, I'm going to show those at a later time. Right now, I just want to demonstrate the stove in action. Okay, stable. Appears to be. So, obviously, I think you may have picked up on some of my concerns, and my concerns primarily right now are stability. If you look at that, that is tall and narrow. The whole assembly is just tall and narrow, and I worry that it, uh, you know, on uneven ground, or if the ground sinks due to the weight, that the whole thing is going to tip over. So, we'll just keep an eye on it, and that's part of my testing. Uh, so far, I've done this on concrete pads at home. I this is the, no, actually, it's not the first time I've used it in the woods. I've used it a couple times in the woods, but uh, it concerns me every time. I have not had an accident with it yet, but I could. Okay, I want to uh, demonstrate this to you. Um, I'm going to use the second flux wrap as a windscreen on top of the first one. I'll show you how. There's a couple ways you can do that, but I'm using four of those cotter pins, those bent cotter pins, to make this work and just drop it down over so it creates a shield over top of uh, over top of the stove and over top of the water bottle. So now, and it also increases the chimney effect. Look at, you can see how much it's drawing already. Flames are coming up the sides of it. And uh, so this will concentrate the heat and it draws extra air in underneath the edge here so that it will run up and, and keep the heat all over the sides of the bottle. I think that's as simple as demonstrate or uh, explanation as I can give it. And this will help bring the water to a boil faster. At least that's the theory. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you with the flux wrap today, was just to give you an initial start, not even a preview. I wanted to show you what it is I'm working with, one of the things I'm, I'm testing out right now. 
Uh, I have my concerns. I see value, but I have my concerns. So the concerns that I have, I think I already mentioned, is the, the stability of the thing. The height is just, well, by the time you get it, it's about 20, and maybe even actually it's more like 24 inches tall when you set the water bottle on top of the cylinder and then after that it is losing the components that you need to put the stove together uh, if you lose those components you you can easily find replacements for them that's not the problem is is when if you lose them while you're out in the woods especially if you're out on a multi-day trip using it without those components is much more difficult now there are other uses for the flux wraps rather than a stove i'm going to be experimenting with those and when i do come back with a review on this item i'll demonstrate some of the other things i've come up with i just wanted to show you an initial uh, means of how to use the stove or the way it's intended the value i see in it is i that Flux wrap stainless steel material is appears to be extremely durable. It, they're not showing any rust. It's not hardening. It's not cracking. It's not take well. It does take a little bit of a shape after use, but you can flatten it right back out, and, and it seems to spring right back into shape again. Yeah, I think I've said enough about it. I'm interested in your thoughts. Is there value in this stove? This assembly of components that you would like to see. You know, what would you call it? How would you use it? Is it something you would consider purchasing it? Now, I know I haven't given you the, the complete overview of what else you can do with it, but based on what you've seen so far, do you have any interest in this? Peter will be watching this video, I know, and he'll be interested in your comments. And that's the reason I opened it up. I didn't want this to be just about what I thought. I wanted to hear from other people in your experiences. Have you, maybe you have one already. These were available in a Kickstarter not so long ago, and a few people have been purchasing them. Uh, Mark from Same Old 77, and I'll put a link to his channel, did a review view of this product a couple weeks ago if you're interested in seeing he, what he's had to say. But uh, there's not a lot of information out there on, on this yet and so I'm just beginning again. I've said that. Let me know. All right. That's all I have. Get out and explore. Take that path less travel. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.